welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm so excited to have my husband back sitting with me. This is Mike. Hi guys. We are gonna be answering your questions specifically around partnership and parenting. And what's really exciting for us is a few months ago, Mike and I created this really beautiful masterclass that's called Sacred Convergence. And Sacred Convergence is all about us honoring our partnership as parents. And so it doesn't matter whether you're married, you're in a relationship, or even if you're separated because the goal is to come together to create the best partnership and parenting possible for us and more importantly for our children. So this is achievable regardless of your relationship status. And so we just wanted to dive into some of the questions that you guys had around partnering and parenting today. But as we go along, we will be referencing Sacred Convergence because there is some really incredible and powerful gold inside of that masterclass. So the link to join Sacred Convergence will be in the description box below. If you know you want it, you can grab it now. But let's dive in to the most asked questions. So one of the most common questions that was asked is how do we handle big conflicts where we don't see eye to eye? I'm going to let my guest start this one off. Okay. You know, answering this was a little tougher than um, I had expected. It, we're very fortunate in that it's a challenge to think of a major conflict we've had, especially around parenting. We, we don't hold I would say, views. hold on, I'm going to, I would say just around parenting. We've had plenty of big conflicts in the 14 plus years we've been together. We are not perfect by any means, but I, I agree with him in parenting. There's yes. not huge conflicts. Yeah, that there there aren't um, moral divergences or, you know, we, we don't come from different religious backgrounds or anything like that. So, um, but I'd say as in our relationship, when we're dealing with a major conflict, um, you know, the, the, the best way to get traction is for each partner to feel seen and heard. I mean, I'm sure you guys have, have been through this before. This isn't new information, but, um, it so heavily affects my ability to, you know, move forward or progress through uh, any challenging situation if I feel alone and isolated and like I'm I'm not being acknowledged. It's not a good way to start anything off. So um, in trying to resolve a major conflict, you know, um, listening to your partner and, and making sure that, you know, you can, if not agree with their position, understand what it is they're trying to express to you and uh, conversely, do what you can to help them understand where you're coming from. I love that. I would, I'm gonna piggyback off of what he's saying. Um, one, for us specifically, taking space has been really important when things escalate. You've gotta know your level of, of emotional intelligence and kind of be able to recognize your partner your partner's emotional intelligence level because our self-awareness is going to dictate whether we're in a space and we have the capacity and tools to even have that conversation when the stakes are so high, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so you've got to know, do I have the ability to not say something that's going to cause pain or stick with my partner or do I need to take a time out? And Mike and I have worked through this over the years where it's like, one person wants to have the conversation, e.g. me, and my, my really on, like tried explaining to me and I didn't have the capacity some years ago to understand like this is part of his process is he needs space. So much is happening in this moment and he needs a minute to sit and calm so he can come back to the table and have a productive conversation. So again, when we talk about honoring our partnership and parenting, regardless of your relationship status, become aware of, of your emotional intelligence level and say like, is it best for us to have a conversation right now while their feelings are really high and the stakes are really high? Or should we both go to our, co our corners, take care of ourselves, come back when we're able to hear each other, as Mike said, so we could acknowledge one another's feelings, 
validate how the other person feels and find common ground to move forward. And the most beautiful thing about modeling this and working on this, cause it's the hardest thing to do, right? But when we embody this and we make this part of our practice, our kids inevitably see our process for working through challenging times and difficult times. And this is something that they will inevitably integrate and embody themselves years down the line. So know your process so that way you can clean it up and it could be the most productive and efficient for your relationship and also for your parenting partnership. I, I think that's a great segue into the next question actually, which was how we feel about children witnessing arguments. Mm -hmm which can be really traumatic. I mean, I know it was for me mm -hmm. when I was a child to the point Nicole was just making. Um, and, and whether you say you don't argue, you have disagreements, and I think that that's all just semantics. Uh, there is something to be gained from witnessing healthy discourse mm -hmm. and disagreements. Mm -hmm. And we have a rule in our home, uh, although it's, you know, nobody's perfect, but we really try everything we can for there to be no yelling. Um, mm -hmm. it, we don't tolerate it from our children. We don't tolerate it from one another. Um, and so long as there are some healthy boundaries uh, around you know, the, those difficult conversations, I, I think that it can be beneficial for your children to witness some of these things. Um, now, that being said, it, it, it breaks my heart and, and makes my skin crawl, um, you know, to, to think about, you know, the, there, there are certainly moments I, I wish I could have taken back yeah, uh, as us. far as, um, not, not so much our daughter Naya, but, um, Kai, mm -hmm. uh, having seen, you know, me get too tempered or, um, so, uh, do you have anything to add? To yeah, that? no, I think that that it's like, this is the thing, and I think this is the power in this conversation, is the world needs to see more humans, imperfect beings, um, who don't always get it right, but are devoted to becoming better, have these types of open conversations. Because it is vulnerable to sit here and be like, yeah, well, we really sucked that one time, and you know, we, we really missed the bar here, there. But it's like, it's so empowering because oftentimes we feel so alone because we don't have enough people contributing to these types of conversations. So this is us in our imperfect form, giving you the best advice that we can from where we are now. We've grown a lot because we are devoted and we are committed and we will continue to have these conversations. So just piggybacking again off of what my, my lovely husband said, I do think that kids can learn quite a deal from seeing healthy conflict. Um, and that, you know, I'm gonna come back to being self-aware and knowing where you are in your emotional intelligence because if you don't have the awareness to stop yourself and say, I'm too emotionally charged and I cannot engage in a healthy conflict right now, and you're gonna let your emotions just take the lead, well then yeah, th there's damage being caused to everyone. So if you're self-aware and you know that you're able to either remove yourself from the conversation, invite your partner to join you in the conversation at a later date because it's getting too heated, beautiful. Show what it looks like to have two differing opinions, of course, with an age appropriate you know, conversation, not all conversations right. are age appropriate, but showing our children how we problem solve, how two people don't have to agree on everything, but they can find a path forward that's going to serve the collective, right? Sometimes we've got to compromise. Like these are all beautiful and powerful life skills that our kids should witness, you know, they really should. And then they can take that with them and say, not only do we not have to agree all the time, but that it's safe when conflict arises because I trust that mom and dad have the self-awareness to either take space and take a time out, they need a time out, or at the end of the day, they're still gonna say, I love you so much, you know? And that's what matters is we love each other so much and nothing is bigger than our love for each other and the family as a unit. And we've really made a point um, to show, uh, in, in particular, Kai, uh, that we can come back to a loving place after a, a mm -hmm. disagreement, you know, um, we, we, we do everything we can to make sure that he's witnessing 
the the makeup or uh, coming back together. And then in events where he, he might not have had a chance to see that, we've also made it a point to go and talk to him and to walk him through our own process of reflection and to let him know that, you know, we might not have been our best selves mm -hmm. and, you know, that we're sorry he had to see that and ask him how he's feeling about the situation. And again, just to make sure that he understands that that's not the the state we, we it's not dwell the bar. in. Yeah. yeah we, we don't dwell there. And so just to concisely, like, you know, restate what Micah said here. If you're going to have a disagreement in front of your children, the repairing is really important. If they're going to witness the conflict, let them witness the coming together and the yes. I love you or the I care about you and we're a team and we will find a path forward. That's what's really important. Yes. Okie dokie, moving on. Okay, this is a good one because it's really important. How That's do we... My favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Switching gears, how do we make time for one another while raising two children? And it's not easy. No. <laughs> it's not easy. No. Um, so on different like timelines mm -hmm. here, um, we, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of parents do this, but whether or not they're, they're conscious of it or make it a priority, uh, maybe another question. Once the kids are in bed, mommy and daddy time is sacred. Mm -hmm. Like we really, it, even if it's just watching a show together, you know, it, it's, it's not always deep conversations, although those are the best evenings. Um, but sometimes, but you're sometimes you're so exhausted like, that you just want to curl up on no the couch words. and, and watch a show together. Like, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that physical touch, you know, yeah. um, maybe, maybe a treat some piece <laughs> yeah. of chocolate or something like or that. Or an adult beverage, you know, yep. we've been known to indulge a yeah. time or two. But, <laughs> but um, you know, we, we really make it a point that every day, you know, when, when the kids are down, that's mommy and daddy time. Mm -hmm. and it may only be an hour, but it really is all we get mm -hmm. uh, on, as at least as a guarantee, we, we have that to look forward to on a daily basis. Yeah, the summertime, the kids really encroach on that mommy. They do, <laughs> yeah. They stay up later than they're supposed to. Yeah. They wake up earlier than they're supposed to. <laughs> but, um, you know, we are also um, blessed in that we're both self-employed and can, from time to time, uh, make date days. Um, but also, this is because of the phase we're in in parenting like Naya is now able to go to daycare when right. when she was, when a, she was newborn, a newborn we obviously happen, weren't doing right. date days together right. so right. understanding there are phases and chapters to parenting and the earliest days are obviously some of the hardest days because your children need you the most and so mm -hmm. keeping in mind that it's not always going to be that all consuming spaces will open up where you can take a date lunch together even if you both work you know you can mm -hmm. if you live or you work in a, the vicinity of one another you guys can meet for a coffee you know yeah and and making that such intentional and quality time is really the key to to fostering that connection and that relationship if you two are in a committed relationship yeah. we've certainly struggled with the the more traditional uh dinner dates mm -hmm. being frequent enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we just had an, an, uh, maybe a few months that yeah, we, we endured. Yeah. And it, granted, we're still blessed because mm -hmm. not everyone gets that opportunity, but, mm -hmm. um, we do really try and prioritize time for, for us, for one another. Um, you know, th those romantic evenings out and or it, even you just in. have to in. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is about making it a priority mm -hmm. and, you know, doing what needs to be done. And again, not letting yourself become desensitized to the chapter or phase that you're in, because I'm going to keep coming back to that self-awareness. A lot of times with Mike and I, it's like, oh, we're kind of like, it feels like we're butting heads a little more than we typically do. And then it's like, when's the last time we've actually made time to sit and connect with one another? And a lot of times that is what is needed just to bring us back on the same page. And it's like this, this physical or conscious reminder that like, yes, we're a team. We love each other. Like we're in this for the long haul, but it's easy in 
your routine as dad and my routine as mom just to do what needs to be done and forget that we've got to make that intentional time because it really does help with the overall vibe and energy of the family and of course your relationship. Oh, did you have anything else to add there? Or is, is that feeling complete? No, um, I'll just, because it popped up in my head, mm -hmm. um, I see how it affects our children when mm. the two of us are, you know, simpatico, uh, they respond when, when they sense that mom and dad are on the same page mm -hmm. and close and, um, you know, if it's not happening in your home, uh, maybe this is one of the, the things to do first. Um, you know, instead of worrying about how you might argue, yeah, I mean, just conflicts in general, maybe the, the solution to both of those is carving out some time for the two of you and really getting back on the same page outside of the parenting paradigm. And if you're not in a committed relationship, it's, you know, ha again, having the kids feel safe mm. in the family dynamic. So maybe if you're at a place, again, depending on emotional intelligence, that you guys can do a family activity together. So again, it's like kids feel safe. It's like mom and dad are good. We're still a family. The family dynamic is different and it's shifted. Um, but we are all on the same team and everyone wants what's in your children's best interest. And if they can feel that, they know that. So again, making that time to model that for your children is most important. Okay, next question is, what has been the most significant change or shift in your dynamic since raising children together? So when I thought about this question, and again, you guys, in our masterclass, Sacred Convergence, we dive really, really deep into the journey that we've had together. We've been together for 14 plus years. It's been about 14 and a half years. Um, married for nine, Kaya six, so parents and partners and parents for over six years. And we have ridden some waves. Um, where we are today is not where we've been and we've gone through some really dark days. So just, just stating that in this masterclass, we really go deep and explain like what brought us to this place. Mm -hmm. But for me, the biggest thing that shifted um, in our partnership is a level of trust that has brought a lot of peace to not only our relationship, but our family dynamic. I had to learn, and I think this is true for a lot of parents, you know, we're two different human beings with two different backgrounds. And while we have very much overlap in terms of values and priorities and beliefs, we're still very unique humans. And we're not, again, always going to see eye to eye. And so the way that Mike would do one thing is not necessarily the way that I would do it. And when we can pan out and see the bigger picture and hold the vision, what's the big goal we have in mind for our family, like what really matters, you lean back and you begin to, to develop more trust in not only yourself, but your partner. And that, like I said, has cultivated so much peace within our family dynamic because not everything was a threat, you know? Not everything needed to be fixed or corrected. It's that I trust Mike, he's got this. He's not perfect and I'm not either, so I'm gonna show grace when grace should be shown. And, and we're gonna like hang on to the things that matter most instead of micromanaging all of the things that didn't go according to plan. As far as what's changed in the dynamic, I, I witness Nicole now um, in motherhood. And like she said, without getting entangled in um, the outcome of that and you know, trying to um, steer that, it, it, it's a, a little different when you're in just you know a, a romantic relationship where the two of you are looking to give and take and feed off one another uh, and then when children come into the picture there are instances where like she said you're your hands off and just trusting that the relationship with your partner and your ch child is unfolding as it should and um, you know, that, that could probably be the source of some conflict too if you unknowingly are trying to impose your will on the outcome of that relationship 
and you're, you're probably asking for trouble. So, um, yeah, th there's, there's been like a, a step back that's been taken. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, we, we see more of each other now, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the image we hold in our head when you're in, like I said, yes. more of a romantic relationship. That's good. We see more of each other now. Yeah. 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 I love that. We have one more question. Final question is what is the greatest tip for successfully partnering and parenting? Um, a really great question. And I think this last answer is going to feed beautifully into it. Um, for me, I think the greatest tip that I could offer is trusting that even though we are two different humans um, who go about life differently, regardless of how much you have in common. And this is especially, you know, I want the, the partners and parents who aren't in a romantic relationship to hear this is even though maybe it didn't unfold the way that you had hoped or intended when the two of you obviously created your children together, can you still hold the trust that your children are getting exactly what they need from your partner in parenting, regardless of how physically present or not they are, emotionally connected they are or not, your child learns from every dynamic in every situation in every type of relationship. And sometimes the things we think we wanna protect our children from the most are the things that will make them so great mm -hmm. and capable mm -hmm. in life. And so mm -hmm. not to rob them or overprotect them from life because at the end of the day, these souls chose us. They chose you and your partner in parenting to learn exactly what they needed to learn and to unlock the codes that they needed to unlock to do the things they're going to go on to do in life. So can you hold that? Can you trust that? And can you move powerfully with that regardless of the outcome? Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Honor yes. the relationship mm. of your partner and your child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what it boils down to. Yeah. It'll save you a lot of grief too. <laughs> yeah. And the, the outcome is entirely irrelevant mm -hmm. and out of your control anyway. Mm -hmm. So you just have to honor it. No wiser words have been spoken, people. No wiser words have been spoken. Well, that's all we have for you. And I hope that it's helpful. I hope that it jolted something within you. I hope that it empowered you. I'm always so grateful when this really handsome man comes in and sits down with me because I say it every time, but if you're new to my channel, you don't know, this really is not his favorite thing to do. He only does it because he loves me <laughs> and I'm really appreciative of it. Um, but again, if this is something that's pulling you, you can join us in Sacred Convergence. We go really, really, really deep and there is powerful transformation that happens on the back end of it. Because again, we just, we get to spend more time with you. We get to be completely vulnerable mm -hmm. in our process, our experience, mm -hmm. our journey together, and how we got to where we are today. So links in the description box. Thanks for hanging out with us. Be sure to check out all the other amazing videos that we have in our Conscious Parenting playlist. And we'll catch you in the next one.